Most people think that they know what a fact is, but you'll find that many people, if you get to questioning them, don't really have a good grasp on the concept of fact. All facts can be categorized into two broad areas, scientific and historical. And when I say history, I mean it with a capital H, everything from one minute ago to the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago. An educated person once said to me in a discussion, well, facts are relative. Facts can change. Is that true? Are facts relative? Can facts change? The answer is yes to the first question and no to the second. Facts are relative, but facts never change. Those are two different questions, so let's take them separately. The word relative is itself a relative word, like bigger. Is my car bigger? You can't answer unless you know relative to what? Relative to a bread box? Yes. Relative to a school bus? No. Facts are relative to two things, to space and to time. It's easy to see how historical facts are relative to time. Is President John Kennedy dead from an assassin's bullet? Yes, he is. And there, you may say, is an example of a fact that changed with time. But on the contrary, it is an example of why every fact must be stated completely in the context of its time. On November 21st, 1963, Jack Kennedy was not dead from an assassin's bullet, and that fact will remain true for all eternity. And on November 23rd, 1963, Jack Kennedy is dead from an assassin's bullet, and that fact is eternally true and unchanging. So when facts are stated completely within their full context of space and time, they do not change. The context of space is a little more difficult to see because it is taken for granted. Most of our facts take place on the surface of the planet Earth or close to it. With all of our historical facts, that's assumed so we don't bother to state it. But scientific facts often take us away from the surface of the Earth so the context of space becomes more apparent in science. The acceleration of gravity, for example, was seen by Isaac Newton as 32 feet per second squared, and for a few centuries that served us perfectly well. That's the rate at which Newton saw his apple fall to Earth. But that's not the gravity that Neil Armstrong experienced when he walked on the moon. Gravity's attraction is actually between two objects, and is relative to the mass of those objects. The acceleration which is generated by that attraction will not be 32 feet per second squared on any other body in the universe unless it has the same mass as Earth. But Newton's fact didn't change. Its context in space is just more limited than what anybody realized at the time. Contrary to historical facts, the context of time takes the back seat with respect to scientific facts, which often remain constant for millions or billions of years. Facts don't change, but our understanding of facts certainly changes. For most of the 200,000 years of human existence, everybody thought the world was flat. But all of that time, and for billions of years before, the Earth was in fact round. Facts exist independently of our knowledge of them. Scientific facts need to be discovered, just like gold. Scientific inquiry is a concerted effort to pursue more facts. That effort often starts with a theory. The theory is then tested with experimentation. If the experiments fail to support the theory, then the theory needs to be revised and tested again. If experimentation contradicts the theory altogether, then the theory has to be discarded. It is a lot like panning for gold. You slosh around hundreds of pebbles that fall out of the pan. The pebbles are theories that get discarded. But when you finally discover a fact, that's a nugget of gold. It has always been a nugget of gold for billions of years before you ever found it. And it will always remain a nugget of gold. It will never change into a pebble. I read somewhere that all of the gold accumulated by humans in all of history would fit into a single Olympic-sized swimming pool. We could say something similar about scientific facts. All of them accumulated in history are still a finite number. And 
and humans will continue to discover more of both. I mentioned theories. What about opinions and theories? Is there a difference between them? Let's take opinions first. Everybody pretty much does know what an opinion is. It's something we think might be true, but we concede that we don't know for sure. And it's pretty clear that opinions fall into two categories, those which can eventually be proven and those which can never be proven. If I think the Green Bay Packers are going to win the Super Bowl this year, well, that opinion is going to be proven or disproven beyond any shadow of a doubt. And then the winner of the Super Bowl this year will become historical fact for all eternity. But if my opinion is that this year's Green Bay Packers is the best football team ever, well, that can never be proven. But I'm entitled to have opinions of both kinds, provable and unprovable, just so long as I don't confuse either of them with fact. As for theory, that word is often used interchangeably with opinion, but people should understand that scientific theory is something quite different from ordinary opinion. First of all, scientific theory must be provable or disprovable. If it is impossible to test, then it is not a valid theory. Secondly, a scientific theory is proposed in order to reconcile facts which are already known but appear to be in conflict. For example, take the shape of the Earth. To those of us walking around on it, it appears to be flat as it did to our ancestors for 200,000 years. But the ancient Greeks were clever with geometry, and a guy named Eratosthenes noticed that one day every year at high noon, the sun illuminated the bottom of a deep well. That meant the sun had to be directly overhead. There was a tall building miles away from the well in Alexandria. If the earth were flat, the shadow cast by that building at noon should be a certain length. But Eratosthenes measured that shadow and it was longer. That fact conflicted with the apparent flatness of the Earth. Eratosthenes' theory to explain that was that the Earth was round. And in fact, he went on to calculate the circumference of the Earth with remarkable accuracy. Ultimately, of course, Eratosthenes' theory was proven to be fact. It should be obvious to everyone that when an opinion is contradicted by fact, it should be abandoned. Astonishingly, there are people who don't feel obligated to that rule of logic. And unfortunately, some of those people get elected to public office in a representative democracy such as ours. We, the electorate, need to screen our officials on their ability to distinguish fact from opinion and their willingness to abandon positions that are contradicted by facts.